now uh, let's uh, uh, brief about uh, your third part of your risk assessment template that is prioritize three actions with the justification uh, already you completed a risk assessment sheet and there are 10 hazards from five different categories and you wrote what are the existing control measures then you wrote what are the additional or further control measures required out of these further control measures required you need to select three of them which is most important most pressing and writing in this section that is prioritizing three actions with the justification here you must pick the three highest priority or most urgent actions needing attention well, that can be from same category or from different categories that doesn't matter then once you chose those three uh, actions now you need to write your justification why you chose these three actions which are most urgent and most pressing so here you need to use your moral, legal and the financial arguments for these actions. So you need to describe if these are not completed or the hazards existing, how difficult or how pressing or how urgent they are. So for that you can use the moral reason why it needs to be uh, implemented or the legal reasons and financial arguments that, uh, that you must have been discussed in your, uh, in your classes. Now for uh, giving legal arguments, you need to find out the breach in ILO. So you need to find out the respective ILO uh, recommendation or convention and uh, appropriate uh, clause number. Then you need to write, okay, this uh, shortcoming is breaching a certain clause and uh, that may attract an enforcement action. So we need to complete this action. Those kind of description should be there so after giving these arguments now you need to consider the likelihood and severity of uh, uh, the consequences if this uh, action is not completed so what kind of injury will occur or ill health or other harm may occur from these and you rate the risk and that needs to be given in your risk assessment sheet next you need to consider the likelihood and severity uh, of the consequences from this hazard which you found and if it is not uh, uh, controlled like the types of injury or ill health or harm may occur you need to consider the types of injury or ill health or harm likely to be happen and the number of workers at risk how often the activity is carried out and how widespread the risk is so these points need to be considered uh, when you select how important the actions you chose and you prioritize these three after that you need to also include how effective each action is likely to be in controlling the risk you need in this section you need to describe the intended impact of each action so what impact that is going to bring after implementing this action and the justification for the time scale for completion of each action uh, you chose different time scale like one month two months or whatever now you need to justify why this time scale is chosen and you need to justify or you need to describe whether you think the action will fully control the risk do you believe the action which you suggested will control the risk completely so these are the details you need to give in this section three or part three now let us go to the fourth part of the risk assessment that is a review communicate and check here you need to set a realistic review date for the risk assessment and say why you have chosen that review date. So you need to write a review date probably maybe after one month or after six months or after 12 months and then you need to justify or say why you chose this date. Second point you need to include here indicate how the findings of the risk assessment are to be communicated. So you need to, uh, you need to describe here how your risk assessment should be communicated through which media is it verbal is it email or or is it uh, by memo or training whatever you need to or you need to mention and to whom these informations or risk assessment needs to be communicated so that also should be uh, mentioned here then finally you need to indicate how you will follow up on the risk assessment to check what actions have been carried out so uh, after completing the risk assessment uh, you need to uh, 
follow it up whether the, the, the uh, suggested actions have been implemented or not so you need to write here how you are going to uh, follow up whether these actions have been carried out or not these are the uh, different items you need to include in your IG2 risk assessment practical project now duration to do this uh, to do this uh, assessment uh, Nebo suggested three hours to complete this uh, assessment to, to, to inspect a workplace to find out the hazards and to complete the risk assessment and complete the report but uh, again uh, your this task is not initiated by anybody so uh, you are doing this either at your workplace or completing the project at your home then uh, that's up to you uh, or you are free to use your convenient time to complete the task now these uh, completed task or assessment forms can be uh, you need to submit to uh, the board for marking so you can do this to either way either electronic forms or handwritten forms both will be provided by your uh, training provider now you decide which way you need to submit it and never suggested to do it in an electronic form so once you complete it uh, you need to send this to Nipur for evaluation now once uh, the evaluation is over you will have uh, two outcomes either pass or refer now Debosh uh, gave some points which may uh, lead to refer a result uh, which is uh, if you do not include a methodology, you are not describing which methodology you used to complete this project, uh, you will not pass the exam. Otherwise, include 9 hazard from 5 hazard categories. You got 5 hazard categories, but only 9 hazards are there, you won't pass the exam. Or only 4 hazard categories, but you have 11 hazards, still you don't pass the exam. Or 10 hazard, but do not state the hazard category. If you are not stating any hazard category, you don't pass the exam. Then, if you prioritize only two actions, there is no three actions, only two actions you prioritize, you will not pass the exam. And include how the risk assessment will be communicated, but do not say who needs to know the information. You wrote how you are going to communicate the uh, risk assessment information to people, but to whom you are going to communicate. If that is missing, then you don't pass the exam. So in each assessment section, they described a marking criteria, I will brief it. Uh, for part one, that is description of the organization and risk assessment methodology, the marking criteria is as follows. The description must be clear and concise so that examiner is able to understand what types of hazard may be present in the learner's workplace. Uh, the description must include the name of the organization, the site location, how many workers are employed, a general description of the organization which must include products manufactured or services provided, the types of activities undertaken, and the ship pattern worked. Then a description of the area to be included in the risk assessment. The learner does not need to include any other relevant information in the description as there will be nothing to include here. Then second the section of part one, the methodology must include as the minimum the sources of information consulted, who was consulted and how the learner desired on additional control measures. Now the second part is risk assessment here you need to include. There are minimum 10 hazards taken from 5 hazard categories. In each column of the table in part 2 of the assessment has been completed with details on the hazard category and the hazards found, who might be harmed and how, what is already being done, that is existing control measures, what further controls or actions are required, with these being sensible and proportionate, time scale for implementation of the additional control measures for each action, with these generally being reasonable or appropriate and the job role of the person responsible for the action now part 3 that is prioritize three actions with the justification for the selection the marking criteria is this where three actions have been selected for each action of, of the following has been included moral legal and financial arguments uh, the legal arguments must be based on ILO convention recommendation and the code of practice local argument local legal process will not be accepted then consideration of likelihood and severity for each action for the same hazard category and the description of how effective each action is likely to be in controlling the risk now the fourth 
part that is review, check and communicate, initiating loop these. The learner must give a realistic review date for the risk assessment and say why they have chosen that date. Then the learner must indicate how the risk assessment findings will be communicated and include who needs to know the information. And last, the learner must indicate how they will follow up on the risk assessment to check that the actions have been carried out. And Nibosh declares they issue the results within 50 working days of the date of assessment. And the result uh, will be either pass or refer to the assessment. And if you are referred, then you can submit, uh, you can submit again your project report after making changes any number of times, but you need to pay extra fees for that resubmission and evaluation. You also will be given a, a checklist uh, using that. You can verify, you can cross check whether you have completed or you have uh, written all those items required in the uh, assessment. Uh, once you have uh, once you are satisfied with all those elements, uh, all those items to be included, then you can submit it. I believe uh, you got a uh, better picture on how to complete your IG2 uh, practical risk assessment. And uh, good luck with that.